Hi, welcome to the Truth of Tal and Isaac. I'm Tal. I'm Isaac. Episode number 105 coming at you tonight. NBA Finals recap and Happy Father's Day draft. Happy Father's Day draft. Now you have to talk because people don't know what that means. Oh, well it's Father's Day today and there's a lot of great dads movies and TV and Isaac and I are just going to do a little draft of all time cool dads. Not necessarily basketball related, just cool dads you want to hang out with. From movie or TV, but mainly movies because I like movies more. That's kind of fair and respectable? That's fair. Okay. Uh, Off the tops, go ahead. Okay. So the Andy Dufresne story, I think it's important that we talk about that. Yes, but not super detailed. Not super detailed. So everybody knows that Shawshank is likely the greatest movie ever made. And Andy Dufresne had to climb through, crawl through five football fields. That's nearly five football fields. Stuff that you can imagine. Are we allowed? Are we you can not swear. allowed to swear? You can swear. Sorry. No, Alex but Alex and Luke, you're going to do it. No, Just... no. Anyway, so we had a similar Andy Dufresne situation in the Chutner House last week. Unfortunately, we had some plumbing challenges. And I don't mean human plumbing challenges, I mean actual plumbing. So there was a decent amount of water and poop backing up. We're, so, okay, but. It was dog poop is what the issue was. Mostly dog poop, but there was yeah. human poop mixed in there too. But the initial clog was the dog. Yeah, we think so, like, Sweet Lou's poop probably was the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back. Okay. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff in our basement. and okay, Now you're now the people picture just poop on the floor. That, like it's not, it wasn't like that. It was a, sm- it was like. It why, why, don't, why don't you describe it for the people I No, like it was like this, like where the plumbing was, it was just like, it was just like all contained. It was we, there's a pretty lot of contained, fair amount of towels. A lot of towels. We had to do a lot of buckets back and forth, up and down. Uh, a lot of like plunging that was unsuccessful. Then we had to do some augury and some eeling. It was difficult, but we were able to tackle the challenge and break through the poop. Yeah, so shout out neighbor Dave for the shout help. Shout out Dave, thanks for the help. Oh, and Marky, right, for the equipment? And Mark for the equipment, that's yeah, right. Thanks okay. very much. Good job. That's enough of the poop. Enough for the poop. Uh, Canadian Nick Taylor wins the Canadian Open. I know we're not huge golf and uh, tennis fans on this podcast, but it's a big deal. First time in 59 years. Maybe the best part of it was his buddy came onto the green after he won, and he got tackled by a security dude. It was awesome. Best part about it was my buddy, Ray Hamlin, shout out Hammer, was at the Canadian Open. Come and on. was there and sent me videos, and it was super cool. Uh, so shout out Ray for that. Ran Good. into him yesterday. That's actually very cool. Um... NBA trade rumors are so much talk right now. Zion, Trey Young, like Trey Young hasn't been in any trade talks. <clears throat> yeah, he has. No, he's on everybody's list. He's not been in any trade talks. The two the two names you should be talking about are are Beal, because Be- Beal's going to get Bradley traded Beal. to Miami. It's kind of inevitable unless Pat Riley falls asleep. I was going to discuss that a little bit later. Okay, I don't. Okay, we can later during the heat bit. Uh, yeah, I I've one off the top. Okay, saw the movie The Flash. Awesome movie, just so good. Like. For superhero fans, for just like people, it's just, it's a really, really fun, awesome movie. Good job, The Flash. And you should see it. Okay, I will see it. I'm going to hang on my dad acknowledgement until a little later in the podcast. During the draft. During the draft. Dad acknowledgement. Okay. Yeah. Uh, And then, Tal music ranking. There will be a point where we do a music draft of sort where dad has to go through the music that I've given him, the current rap. Like, do you remember who I was just listening to before we started? Uh, Yeah, UK guys. Okay, respect. Dave and something? Yeah, Dave and something. So we're going to have him break down modern rap, and it's going to be really good good content. Listen, I really got to research. I likely have to research this topic more than any other topic I've had to research for the draft. Sorry, for the podcast. So this is likely a few episodes away. This is probably mid to end of August. Okay, I'm just getting it ready. You can put that in your calendars, folks. Put that in your calendars. Okay, go ahead. August 22nd will be the, the, the estimated date. Okay, Nuggets are the NBA champs. Go ahead. Um, good for the Nuggets. They were just too good, too deep. Get this. I think they were going to be even deeper next year because guys are going to chase rings, right? And this is the first time a center has been the key piece to uh, NBA champions since Shaq in 2002, I think, like a long time ago. And listen, we'll talk a little bit more about Joker afterwards, but he's a freak and the two of them together were awesome. But the role players, I think, need to get a little more. Not the role players, they're third, fourth, fifth, sixth guys. I think they need to get a fair amount of credit. And Michael Malone needs to get some credit as well. Um, 
Because you're struggling. Anthony Davis in 2020 was the core of that Lakers team with all due respect to LeBron. So, and he was a center. So, 2020 was the last time a center was a core to an NBA team. Just putting that out there. He's a center weighs 215 pounds and is soft. Okay. A, he's a lot stronger now. I know he and is. And B, yeah, he's still soft, but the bubble allowed him to stay healthy in his chamber. And that's what the only reason why they beat the... Injured heat. I don't want to talk about the injured heat. Right? Anyway, talk talk about Denver a little bit more. Aaron Gordon had some good games and some good moments. Obviously, Jamal Murray, proud Canadian. He's a great guard. He's fast. He's fearless. I don't remember him being such a good ball handler and assist guy. He was always that good of a ball handler. Playmaking, facilitating, I think I wrote down. He really developed a lot since he came into the league. As a, as a playmaker, in the bubble, right, he was just a scorer. He was like, a, he, like he could get you yes, 40 or 50, yeah. and he did. Uh, but he was a consistent tennis to game guy in the finals. Part of which is because that's how the Heat kind of played them. But also because he's that good of a playmaker now. Yeah, it's funny because usually you don't see that develop in players. They're either, like, they're going to develop the three-point shot, they're going to develop the low-post game, things along those lines. But he developed to be, like, a true point guard if you can have one playing with uh, the Joker. Yeah, the, the Nuggets, like, the Nuggets, they shot, like, crap a lot of the series. They turned the ball over a lot. They had a couple big calls at certain points that didn't go their way. I think the fishing was fine. Uh, and they still won in five, right? Like, that's how good Denver was. Exactly. Shows the talent disparity between the two teams, which we talked about going into the series, where it's like, just head to toe. It's, un- it's unbelievable. It's One of the things, yeah, I haven't heard more, a lot about it in the last few days, but the first couple of days after, I heard just crap about, oh, Nuggets got lucky. They played, you know, an eight seed and then a four seed and then another eight seed. Listen, they played some of the best players in the NBA to, we- to win the championship. This... Trophy should not be discredited in any way. I'll address that. You can discredit every single champion in NBA history. Everybody's like, going to have to get a little lucky. And some of them are like extremely, right? Like the one that jumps out to me, I'm sorry Raptors fans, like 2019 finals jumps out to me. It once. opened up for them, and but they rolled through. No, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying like that's one that jumps to mind. Obviously the bubble, you can, right, people talk about the Giannis here. You can do this every single year. You can point it at a key injury or a key thing and say like all that didn't. Look. Doesn't matter. Someone still has to win. Mm-hmm. Let it be de- right. Like, and people are clowning them. They're not clowning them, but discrediting them. They played the eight seed. Well, they were the best team in the West, so that's how that works. I think they might have been the underdog against Phoenix to open the they series. They were the underdog against. It's very Phoenix. close. So yes. a lot of people. I don't even know what we did. I I think I said it's going seven. Uh, I might have said Denver in seven. I'm not sure. But like, it wasn't. Sure, I said Denver in five. No, you didn't. It's it's not like they I'm were him generally. You're not him. You're him. So it's like Denver had a. You know, as tough of a path as you could have for a one seed in the circumstances. It's kind of like March Madness where a couple things go their way and then you get to play Loyola Chicago in the Final Four. Kind of like it just happens. Exactly. It's the way it, it's the way it rules. So don't discredit that. I, I'm glad you brought that up because there are people that are saying that and it's just dumb. It's kind of where I'm at on that. Uh, you want to talk a little bit more about Denver? Yeah, I can talk more about Denver. Uh, Ish Smith, KCP, Bruce Brown, Reggie Jackson, DeAndre Jordan, Pistons Legends. Uh, former Pistons with the ring now. <laughs> I wrote down John Jordan because that counts. Look, he the, played for the Pistons for about two weeks. Yep, Bruce Brown. He didn't play at all. Bruce Brown. I loved. I loved him in Brooklyn. I know. He's such a versatile player. I'm afraid he's going to go to Houston because Houston has a lot of cap and they're just going to throw money at guys like Brook Lopez, Bruce Brown. I love Bruce Brown. I like KCP. Uh, Ish Smith obviously wasn't in the rotation, kind of with Reggie, but like I like those two dudes. So Ish Smith was together. awesome in Detroit. Uh, in the twelve other teams he was on, what, played Washington. When did he really kind of? He scored a fair amount, I think, in Washington. Uh, yeah, he was never a scorer, but yeah, he had he was thirteen teams in thirteen years, something wow. like that. And then Jeff Green, who I've loved forever, yep, twelve teams in sixteen years, and he got his ring finally. And yep. Jeff Green is a really likable dude. Uh, you talked with Jamal Murray. Do you have any more? Do you want to do a little Jokic thing here? Is there a guy? We might as well. Go Obviously, ahead. he started as a second round pick. I think he was 41st overall, war torn Serbia. Like, he came in the league, and people just didn't know much about him and the game he had. And then finally, the and there's a lot of articles written on this in the last couple of weeks. The Nuggets trainer who finally said, hey, let's get on it. So, listen, he doesn't have the body of an NBA All Star Hall of Fame or whatever, but he is in great shape. He. Really worked hard. Obviously, lost a fair amount of weight during um, uh, bubble and during COVID. But like, no matter every game he plays, he works out after the games. The deal with his brothers is actually pretty entertaining and yeah, funny. Like, yeah, they're convicts, but it's fine. Like, are they are they really bad? Well, I, I don't know, but I'm just like the chances that they're in some sort of mob in Serbia, I think, are pretty high. Respectfully to those involved, I just 
If you just it, like, it's pretty, it's pretty high that they they do some bad things. Oh, they're fun. Oh, they're, no, fun. they're fun. They're fun to watch, and yeah. you, they go into the stands, and they're not afraid of anybody, no matter where they go. Morris uh, brothers can take him. They're MMA guys. They can take him. Just putting that out there. I stand by that. And I'm not even a Marquise uh, Morris. Morris or, brothers are pretty tough. They are MMA trained. Like people don't understand. Like they can they can beat the crap out of anybody in the NBA, probably except Jimmy. Uh, can we talk about Bones Highland? We can talk about Bones Highland. I want very briefly. I just have like. This is going to be the one dude in NBA history who couldn't make it work with Jokic. That's a really good chance this is how this goes down. Uh, you know, Bones Highland requested a trade, didn't like Denver, didn't like his role. Uh, and then, now he's in the Clippers and he's in LA, but blah, 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 blah. It's a championship. He could have got a championship and just played his role a little similar in a few ways to the Jordan Poole thing, I think. Different, but there are some similarities. Just stupid. I like Bones Highland, but man, this is like, ride your rollout, man. Play with Jokic. It just... Like you said, Denver's going to attract a lot of free agents. There's going to be a lot of people that want to play with Jokic. Uh, and Bones Highland's not one of those dudes. It's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next few years because almost every time a team wins, they're like, okay, they've got that nucleus in place and they're going to win two or three more championships. It doesn't really seem to happen and hasn't happened for a long time. Standing back now, we're like, okay, Murray, Jokic, still young. Murray has recovered from his injury. Jokic seemingly doesn't get injured. And part of it is... He never jumps more than two inches off the floor. Like his lateral movement isn't his specialty. So it's not as though when he's 33, he's going to get a lot slower. Well, the thing is with Jokic, there are some similarities to Giannis. Where foreign guy, kind of a different approach to the game. And kind of say things that make me nervous as an NBA fan. Where it's like, Jokic has said a lot. Where Like if he retired tomorrow, I wouldn't be shocked. You know what I mean? Like he's not obviously... But he's that type of guy where he says, like, it's just a job. He well, likes the, the clip of him after the winning game, when he found it, he had to wait three more days to go to the parade because he just wanted to go back home to Serbia. Yeah. Like, sorry, Denver, but it's pretty cool. Like, he was disappointed. He just wanted to go home. And Giannis has said similar things where yeah. it's like, I just, I and I think part of it is the international player aspect of it. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Uh, but look, Denver as a team, they're very I likeable. think they're a fun team to cheer for. They're right? very, exactly. very likable. Say the same thing. Like, if you look up to down the roster, uh, I love Jokic, I love Murray, I love Brown. I don't love Aaron Gordon. I don't love Michael Porter Jr. But if you go through, like, I really like the Browns. I like Christian Brown. I like Bruce Brown. I like Gish Smith. I like Casey. It's a fun team, uh, and I, I am happy. I think they're the favorites next year. I kind of like um, Mike Malone continuing to throw shade at L.A. I don't. I, I like it. I don't. Shut he, up. He's he, continuing that narrative. He wants Denver to be like perceived as the underdog and he's already setting up for next year when he can beat on them again which i do look forward to that but like if you, bigger fish to fry dude like don't worry about the lakers i hear and i'm as anti-lakers as anybody don't talk crap about the like just just leave it and and enjoy this and don't talk about the lakers uh but i understand that like it's just going to be a thing now uh because that was a thing during the entire four games of the lakers nuggets series do you have anything else on the nuggets um, I just I, I think it, we need to give them credit for Denver winning ugly. I said Miami that. was able. I, I'd like to give them more credit. I did so good. Um, Miami did a good job making the game muck and dirty and hard and hard nosed. And honestly, if Miami had another guy, I stop. Don't. I, I just I I need to say that. Listen. Okay, now we're going to talk about Miami for a minute. Which, Actually, you know what? Are we done with that? Because uh, I think we're done with that. You get to talk about Jimmy first. Okay. And Miami. Go ahead. So I have a lot to say here. I imagine I'm... he does have a lot to say. Uh, I'm, let me just start with this. It would have been nice to have one of the following three. Healthy Jimmy. A single role player step up consistently in the finals. Or healthy hero slash depot. One of, I want one of those three. Either healthy Jimmy. Like give me Milwaukee Jimmy. Give me... A role, give me Caleb Martin from the conference finals. Right, Caleb Martin was abysmal in the finals. Max Struess was like eight percent from three. Or give me healthy hero or depot. I would have because this is this had a depot series written all over it. Same with the Boston series. Uh, I wanted one of those three, and I and I didn't get it, and it is a little sad. But look, this is such a remarkable run. I can't complain. They beat the two best teams in the league to get here. Right, they beat the Bucks and they beat the Celtics, who were the one and two teams in the league respectively. Okay. Yep. So. This was a great run, and I was I went back and I watched that those Milwaukee highlights. 
that 56 point performance is one of the best performances in basketball history. I have no, like if you go back and watch what he did and who he did it to, right? Like he hit ridiculous step back shots, Drew Holiday, scream at him, go down, guard seven foot one, Brooke Lopez. I just, I don't want to do too much on the Milwaukee thing, but that was probably my favorite moment as a Jimmy guy of the, of the playoffs. Um, Regular season, bottom five offense, bottom three and three point percentage, negative point differential. We've talked all about this. They had nine undrafted guys, and they still made it. Nine here. undrafted guys, something like that. Maybe wow. it's a little more, but like, <laughs> like it's. I if you look at the play in game really quickly, a little recap. They lose the first play in game. About halfway through that game, I do the Jimmy trade destination game, which I still have. Yep. Uh, I wanted Jimmy in Denver is one of the big ones I wanted, but that's fine. Uh, so they lose the first play in game. They're losing the second game in, a, in you know with a couple minutes to go. Do you remember the stuff with DeRozan's daughter? A little bit. Can you refresh my memory? So she was courtside. Oh yeah, <laughs> and that's was right. screeching. screaming and yelling. And yeah. and the, that's how the or sorry, that's how the Bulls won their first playing game because the, this the daughter was there and she couldn't go to the game in Miami. So if she goes to the game in Miami, I don't think that he win. Just putting that out there. Okay, round one, they beat the Bucks. I talked about that enough. Fifty-six point performance. Round two, Knicks. They're the underdog. Miami's the underdog. They yep. beat the Knicks with Josh Fart. Taking out Jimmy. I'll never forget that. Round three. They're playing the second best team in the league. They beat them in seven. I don't even know if they were up through. All I remember is Heat in seven. Round four. They lose to the best player in the league. Uh, with a perfectly healthy cast. Right? Denver was completely healthy. Mm-hmm. You had a couple, right? Like, Jokic tweaked his ankle and stuff. He, he's, he was fine. Uh, that's all I got for, for now. I'll let you run for a bit. I just thank you, Jimmy, for this run. I just, again, Jimmy willed his team to the finals. We talk about legacy. We talk about reputation. Now Jimmy is firmly in the Hall of Fame discussion. Just, no, no, he's in the Hall of Fame. There's no, there's no conversation anymore. There's not. Here's how Jimmy did it. On both ends of the floor, he just said, me. Run it through me. Utter confidence. Physical gifts that, like, I don't think his physical skills are appreciated enough by people, right? Strong, fast, could guard anybody. Doesn't matter the size of them. He did wear down a little bit at the end. Obviously, the heart injury... I'm sure we're not going to hear about it because that's not Jimmy's way. But he's going to just go to Germany and have surgery, some foot guy. and But he'll be back again in September and he'll be fine. It is just funny to see the teams that gave up on him. Minnesota essentially gave up on him for Cat. Well, how's that working out for Minnesota? Cat's also in a lot of trade rumors. And there's a good chance he gets traded. Yep. Put that out there. Keep going. Um, Philly basically said picked Simmons over Jimmy. Simmons and Harris. Yeah, yeah Simmons and Harris. So Harris is now trade fodder, and Simmons, I don't know, he might be a librarian for all that I know. He's, well, he's not smart enough because he failed all of his class at LSU. Res- respectfully, Did he really? Simmons. Do you not remember that? There was like oh. stuff and he like, didn't even know if he was allowed to play and go in the draft because he like couldn't pass the clap. Sorry, Ben Simmons. He's catching strays. We didn't need to do that. Uh, what was the other team he left? Chicago. And Chicago's been in shambles since he left too. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he was him at that point. He was him. Was there he? There was flashes. He had a 50-point game. He was the guy towards the end of that stretch. Then what happened there? Uh, there was a lot of like he, like he was there for like eight years and didn't play for a while, so it didn't start off great. Uh, and then he just didn't have a ton of help around him, right? Like that. Derek Chicago Rose team, got injured, obviously. Jo- like Joe Noah was awesome. He got old. Boozer got old, and they just kind of filtered out. And it was just kind of Jimmy and a bunch of guys, uh, right? Like Wade was there for a stint, and it wasn't great. Uh, and it was time for him to leave Chicago, and that's fine. I know I don't hate Chicago, but I I am mad at Minnesota and Philly just because like they didn't treat Jimmy well, and I don't like that. Okay, I think it's important that we now talk about. Uh, Miami's reputation in the league and them as a trade, like who they're going to trade for. But then also free agents, people are going to want to say, hey, I want to play Miami, right? Like Miami is a fun city. People want to play there. And now they're realizing, wow, listen, I could be that third guy easily and help bring them a championship. So the Beal rumors, can you tell us, tell the fans a little bit about what a Beal rumor would look like? So the trade that is on the table is... Now they're gonna like people are gonna scoff at this, but it is Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, and multiple first round picks. I think Miami can trade not up hero? to three. Not hero. Do you not know this? No. Hero was not in the Beal talks. Hero was in the Dame talks, which I don't think will happen. Hero was not in the Beal talks. Uh, it's a testament to how bad Beal's contract is. Wow. Um, but yeah, that's like this is legit. Like I don't obviously I don't know when this is coming how out. Many picks. It's just multiple. They can trade up to three. I would assume it'd be all three. Is there some connection OKC holding on to a future first or something crazy like that? There's some kind of some sort of protection. But uh, if Pat Riley's awake, he'll work it out. Uh, the Beal thing, you know, if, if Beal goes to Miami and they keep here, obviously, like, that's going to be a pretty tough team to stop. Uh, but I will just say this. 
in 2020, I was extremely high on this Heat team. Extremely. I think they were a four or five seed in the bubble. I was so high on them and so invested. Uh, 2021, I was not high on them at all. That was kind of the year post-COVID. They were injured. They had all sorts of goofy issues. Yep. Uh, and they sucked in 2020. I was extremely high on them in 2022, last year. This year, I was not high on them at all. If we go into this... They were crap in the regular season. If we go into next year with this same roster a very similar roster, I'm going to be extremely low on them again just because they can't repeat this type. It's a statistical anomaly. Anomaly. This doesn't happen, right? If you get Beal, maybe you got something going on. Uh, it seems that Jovic, their rookie, is the one that's preventing the Beal. Like, Riley wants to hold on to Jovic uh, and, and Washington wants him. But, like, if that's what's the toss-up here, then I think Miami's in good shape to get Beal, which would be fun. But uh, we'll talk about that later after a potential trade. Okay, I think that's a good NBA wrap-up. Are we good? Yeah, really quickly, this was not Miami's year. Like, I just want to say this was not Miami's year no, at all. No, absolutely not. The Heat players, this is a good stat. This is ESPN. Missed 289 regular season games, like a, all the Heat players. That was the second most in the league. I don't know who was first. Good chance it was Portland when they went into full tank, ridiculous mode. Uh, they used 26 different starting lineups in the regular season. Wow. Out of 82 games, that's nuts. Injuries to Hero, Butler, Vincent, and Depot in the playoffs made Miami use six different starting lineups in the playoffs. Not because they wanted to tweak with things, because the guys were injured and they couldn't play against. Who was their third best player in the playoffs? In the playoffs? Statistically, yeah. it'd likely be Martin. Okay. Even though he had a bad Invisible finals. Invisible in the finals, right? He was Invisible. sick or something mysterious He was there. sick for a bit. They, yeah. they, they had a lot of stuff going on. But uh, thanks, Jimmy, for the run. And, uh, and let's get Beal and let's make things happen. Okay. Uh, I think we need to move into best ads. We mentioned again, we mentioned earlier in the show, this is Father's Day, so we need to acknowledge personally, uh, shout out to all the dads out there that have impacted uh, me and my life. Some of them, obviously my dad, Gad, who's passed away, but other people that um, have an impact on our lives on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Yep, thanks, Dad. Okay, so now we're going to draft dads. It's not a basketball draft. It's just a... Dad draft. I'm not sure what this means, but that's what's just going to happen. So These are people who we want to hang out and have a beer with. Yeah, but some of them, like, I wouldn't mind next to me in a fight. Next, true. Okay. Yeah, true. So, are we, we're just going to draft a bunch of guys here. Uh, again, I'm not sure what this is going to look like, and we'll just go. I think we'll probably go 10. Okay, 10 we'll, just, each. we'll just go until our teams aren't good until we're getting, like, bottom feeders. Okay? okay. I think that makes sense. I'll let you go first because it's Father's Day, and I'm not a dad, and you are. So you can go first. Okay. Well, number one overall, it's got to be the guy who, if somebody gets kidnapped, who do we want to get them back? It's got to be Liam Neeson from Taken. What's his name? Um, Dude. Brian Mills? Yeah. Did you just look at my paper? Or? Nope. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Brian Mills. Okay. Brian Mills. So... Uh, that's, yeah, he's first overall. If you, if and he was high on the on the, all the draft boards, right? Yes, he was. Uh, I'm going to go with... I have to go with Chris Gardner here. This is Will Smith, Pursuit of Happiness. Excellent. Awesome movie. Awesome dad. Uh, go watch Pursuit of Happiness if you haven't seen it. That one's like a, not a super deep cut. Like, I don't know. Was that a big deal when it came out? I don't think it was as big a deal as it should have been. Like It got a fair amount of attention, right? Because it was you know it was Will Smith and it was, it was, a, it was a good movie based on a true story. Uh, it was awesome. Go watch Pursuit Happiness. Chris Gardner, he's first overall dad. Yeah, so many good dads out there. Um, man, there's a couple of guys that I'm... We'll talk about some of the honorable mention, and, but a couple of guys I'm not including on my draft board just because there's too much bad things that happen to them in real life. Go ahead. You can just say the name. Well, like Heathcliff Huxtable, right? Uh, Mr. Cos, like in the TV show, he was a great dad. Yeah. Right? Very entertaining, but... Like, he's a terrible, horrible person. Yeah, I didn't write down Bill Cosby. Just let the record show. Yeah. I, I did so, not write him down. Yeah, I, I didn't write him down that I would draft him. I just wrote him you down. Wrote his, you wrote him down, so that counts. Okay, he, he's bad. He's not included. Okay, so I've got Liam Neeson 1. Uh, I, I probably need to go uh, just a little bit of comedy. I need a bit of fun here just because you got to balance it out. And I think you got to go with Phil Dunphy. Uh, bit of a sleeper. He's He cares a lot. Good sense of humor. He's the type of dad who will do anything. Going with Phil. Okay, I'm going to poke some holes in this. When's the last time you watched Modern Family? Oh, I've watched some Modern Family. I've watched some... When was the last time you watched... Like, was a I 12? Episode? No, no. In the last month, I've watched a couple episodes. Okay. I wrote down Phil Dunphy, too. Just because, like, 
I did, I, funny. I don't watch a ton of TV, but like the Phil Dunphy highlight tapes on YouTube are good yes. watches. So yeah. I like Phil Dunphy. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a really strong pick. I got to go with Mr. Incredible here. In every draft, I have to pick a cartoon guy. He's going to be one of two cartoon people that I will take. Uh, open with Mr. Incredible, one of my favorite movies of all time. And and a really good dad. And you see that in two when he's with the little kids. He's just awesome. Good job, Mr. Incredible. Okay, I'm going to scoop your next pick. Guaranteed he's super high in your draft board. Right out from under your nose, I'm taking Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince. I know you had him high. Uncle Phil's awesome in so many ways. He's just always teaching. He's always helping. He's always got the right thing to say in a tough period uh, in anybody's life. Uncle Phil, you're my man. Okay, we should also shout out Uncle Phil. Yeah, we should shout out Uncle Phil. My Uncle Phil. Yep. My uncle named Phil. Some people call him Brad, but we call him Uncle Phil. Yep. Uh, now I'm going to go. So surrogate dads are eligible, correct? Absolutely, they're eligible. Okay, just confirming. Uh, then I'm going to go with Creasy from Man on Fire because he's eligible. Oh, that's it. Ex- I didn't write him oh, down, but that's yeah. a great one. Totally. Go watch Man on Fire. He's not. He, oh, I watched some of it last night. Yeah, we were. It was on the other day, like yesterday. <laughs> uh, he's not a dad, but like at the end of the movie, he is the dad in the movie. Just uh, Denzel Washington as as Creasy is like one of my favorite characters probably ever. So, he's, so be, he's because my dad. of that pick, I'm actually just going to change around my ranking a little bit. I was going to go with another uh, humorsome guy, but I think I got to go with John Q. Right? Great character. Good movie. I know you had him high in your draft board as yeah, well. Yeah, you're just picking Denzel because I, I picked Denzel. Yeah, I just keep scooping all your guys because uh, it's a good movie. Again, I don't think it got nearly the attention that it should have. It was great. Okay. Uh, I've got some... I have quite a few names here. Some of them are relatively deep cut. I'm going to save those for the end. Okay. Uh, now I'm just going to go with Uncle Ben from the first Spider-Man movie. He doesn't get a ton of screen time. But like that character is so good, and he he's has some awesome scene. He, he's iconic, and he is extremely important. Uh, like in the in the culturals, right? Like with great power comes great responsibility. From Uncle Ben, that, yeah, that scene. sentence holds true so many different ways. That's a really good pick. I did actually. I didn't have him on my board. I have another. I probably should. Have. I have another guy similar to that, but I'll let you yeah. go now. Um, I'm actually surprised that this guy hung around for as long as he did. The one speech from obviously Rocky Six. Is a, is a speech that uh, will live in infancy, in, infamy. I'm going with Rocky Balboa, but I don't, like, especially in Rocky VI and then in Creed. Those are the two times when he's really stepping up to be a big dad. It, and then, it, like, the kid, he just, I'm going to hang out with six, you. It took six movies for him to be a good dad. It, it did take a while. It did take a while. But once he got going, he was, I don't know, he's pretty good. Uh, Poe's a good name. Like he was, and, you know, you know there was some small signs that he was going to be a good dad in Rocky too, but it, he kept it hidden. You're just drafting because it's Rocky, and that's fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just want to say, I'm not going to draft John McClane from Die Hard. I'm not going to. I just had to say his name because he technically is a dad, but I'm not drafting him because he's just like, we get so little dad content of John McClane, yeah, which is I, fine. I agree. Okay, so I'm going to go with another one here. Uncle Jonathan Kent, Dad Jonathan Kent. From Man of Steel, uh, Kevin Costner, surrogate dad, kind of dad, pretty much like this awesome uncle guy. He's awesome. He's I, so I had him on my board as well. Just the one scene with their tornadoes there Don't and Jonathan spoiler. Kent. Uh, so those... Spoiler? It came out 10 years ago. It's it came okay. out 10 years okay. ago. If you're uh, obviously listening to us, that's okay. But you can picture the scene. Jonathan Kent, he had to go back to the car for some reason. Dog. Get dog. For the dog. And uh, Clark is there with his mom underneath the overpass. And Jonathan Kent just... Puts his hand up and tells Clark, you're now going to take care of your mom? I got this. Well, yeah. Well, the, the scene is super, Clark could have saved him. Clark Superman. But the world was not ready for Superman at the time. Yep. And that's what Jonathan Kent was saying the whole movie. So that's like one of the best scenes in superhero movie history. For Man sure. of Steel. Absolutely. Awesome. Good job, Jonathan Kent. That's my guy. Okay. Uh, I actually I don't have enough age in my team. So I need to go back uh, a little bit here. And Howard Cunningham from Happy Days. Okay. Great dad, lots of fun. And I think it's important to acknowledge that his son Chuck just disappeared. And and Howard still stayed positive. Like, who knows what happened to Chuck? But it didn't let Howard impact his, his role as a dad, as a character. He, he was the man. Okay, yeah, you can have all the TV dads. That's fine. I know I, you're not picking the TV dads, but Howard Cunningham is the man. I'm going to put him on cat. the list and people are like, that's a good pick. We like Howard. No, Mr. Incredible Bad. Fought in the war, opened a hardware store. Okay. You know he's handy. Okay, I'm going uh, Jack Burns, Meet the Parents. Oh, yeah, that's 
a good one. I just ripped these movies. Go watch the Fokker Meet the Parents movies. <laughs> so good. Robert De Niro was like, I don't know. Like it was, <laughs> at least for me, it was kind of under the radar until I saw it. Maybe it's because I'm younger and these came out when I was like not born or young. But Robert De Niro and Meet the Parents, like all time movie dad for sure. Like. I'm kind of shocked he fell. I thought you were going to pick him really high just because you knew I liked him a lot. Yeah, I did. He was on my list high. Um, so I'm going to go with a trendy pick just because I pay so much attention to pop culture uh, and I'm in on everything Be that's careful. hot. No, no. Ted Lasso. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like he left England where he could pretty much be dubbed a knight. But no, no. He went back to, I think, Kansas City, wherever he's from, to take care of uh, his son and be a dad to his son. But Ted Lasso father to many always had the right thing to say good job ted yep so i didn't even know he was a dad respectfully i haven't watched you didn't watch the show i've not watched any ted lasso so i he was not on my board our fans are going to back that pick as well they're Just not so no one's going to say anything my list is kicking your list but like you got some good dads this wasn't I'm a winning. competition it's always a competition okay give me uh I'll just, just to make you mad i'll get guido from life is beautiful here shocked that he oh, fell oh, you thought i wasn't going to pick him I'm i did i him. did not think you were going to pick him that was uh, a good steal you i think we were just talking about life is beautiful we just talked about it like he's been talked about a lot lately he's getting a lot of pub respect to guido uh life is beautiful great movie he's aging well great dad yeah shout out him yeah um, okay, so I just went new. Now I got to go iconic. Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird, right? Literary fame, movie fame. Uh, Gregory Peck, nothing. You can't go wrong with uh, Atticus. When's the last time you saw To Kill a Mockingbird? It's been a long time. Okay. It's been a long time. But okay. he's a guy who can shoot from long distance. But he's it's a guy, just in basketball. I know, but he's, he's, he's multi-talented. But if you got to go to court, like if you and Tom and the guys just get uh, accused of something, Dude. We, we, we can call some lawyers that we know, but we could call Atticus. He could help you out. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, I got to I gotta go with Maximus Decimus Meridius from yeah, Gladiator. Good like, one. Limited dad content. This is Isaac Oglin's pick. He told me to pick him. He also liked Creasy. Uh you get help from Isaac Oglin? Yeah. He's a great source for you. Yeah, we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll get him back on. We'll run it back. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Russell Crowe, Gladiator, is my guy. Yeah, good one. Okay, I'm going to go a little more TV. Just two here that I'm leaning on. Actually, three of them. I, I think i got to go classic again, just because obviously my team is going to have a little more experience than Youngblood. What do you go? i got to go Mike Brady. Mike Brady Bunch. Like, yeah. He was able to take in the three girls... Carol. Didn't Alice carry? Didn't the maid carry, though? No, I think Alice got, actually, Alice, too much hype. Like, she was pretty solid, but I think she actually got too much hype. Okay. Mike Brady was the rock of that family. For sure, he's the only one that worked. Okay, we're not having that conversation, okay. dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to go with Gru from Despicable Me. My second cartoon guy here. Great surrogate dad here for the girls. Uh, Gru, Gru is him. I'm a big. I've been a big Gru guy for a while. So shout out Gru. He's my guy. Okay. Him and Mr. Incredible. That's awesome. Those are two good picks. And yep. Gru's like 15 feet tall. So if you want to play basketball, just remember that. Yep. Um, I have to go with like one of the all-time fathers, the Godfather, Vito Corleone, right? Like he's the father and the Godfather to many. Kumpar, respect to you, and uh, we gotta go with Vito. Yeah, I don't know if Vito's like. I don't think he's a great dad in those movies. I he was probably a better nono than a dad. Okay. Well, which which counts. Okay. I'm going to go with Professor Henry Jones Sr. from Last Crusade. This is Indy's dad here. Uh, Sean Connery. Yeah, solid. He only has one movie, but he's awesome. Sean Connery's great in Last Crusade. He's, he's got some good lines, actually. And he's one of my favorite movie dads, so Sean Connery. Yep. Uh, I think I need to go with a little bit more... Um, Comedy, Clark Griswold from The Vacation. I'm shocked. Yeah, I thought you were going to pick him in the first round. That's yeah, he's just <laughs> funny. Like, he'd be, he's a road trip guy. Uh, so, this is Sweet Lou in the backyard. No, you no. probably can't hear. So, I'm just, okay. the dog's barking a little in the background. The dog's barking a fair amount. Our dog doesn't bark. But we're just going to keep chipping away here. Okay. Uh, we're almost done. We'll, we'll do two a, more I got a couple each. more. Yeah. We'll do two more each. I'm going to go with Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy. I knew you'd pick him. Yeah, he's a solid pick. Love Guardians. Love Yondu. He's so awesome. Surrogate dad. He's my guy. I think I have a lot of surrogate dads, which is okay, I think. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so, obviously, I picked the first dad who can go and take care of anything in a situation. I'm going to pick one more of those guys because I like that just have those guys. just makes me feel sleep a little bit better at night knowing that Arnold Schwarzenegger from Commando 
is by my side. By my side, like he, he literally destroyed an entire army to get his daughter back. That was that's, pretty solid. That's a stupid pick. You know what? You don't realize the impact of Commando in the eighties. It was a huge movie for me and all my guys. Okay, we went to see it in the show. I remember us in being upset in the movies theater or whatever. I remember us being upset because Kevin Ratzoy wasn't with us and he was an enormous Arnold guy. But we had to go see him. He was a big Arnold guy in 85. That's a little ahead of his time. Uh, Rat was a weightlifter guy. Well, yeah. Cause, oh, okay. Because I think Terminator was 84 and then Commando was 85. And then that's when he went like crazy like stardom mode. Yep. Okay. Are, am I doing two more or one more? Um, Do two more. Okay. I'm going to go with relatively deep cut here. Uh, Duke Leto Atreides. From Dune, one of my favorite movies ever. Oh yeah, Oscar Isaac in Dune. Not a t- like he only gets one movie. And he's yeah, not that's in a good a one. Ton, yeah. but awesome dad, awesome movie. Um, since Isaac has taken a lot of the circuit dads, I think it's important that I take one of the circuit dads as well. Mr. Drummond, yeah, right. Like those people that are of my vintage are really going to appreciate Mr. Drummond. He adopted his housekeeper's two children and was a spectacular dad for them. And his daughter Kim, who had a fair amount of issues. He was always there for her. Mr. Drummond. What's that from? A lot of people don't know. I know, but a lot of folks won't. Different strokes. Yeah. Good one. Okay. One more. Uh, I'll go with Man from The Road. Oh, that's a good cut. I, I thought about him. It's I didn't write movie. him down. I watched yeah. it once. I'm probably not going to watch it again. Not a very fun watch, but awesome dad. Uh, Talk about doing anything for your kid. He's yeah. that guy. So shout out Man from The Road. He doesn't have a name. His, man, his name is just Man. His name is Man. And I think his son is just like son or boy. Uh, but uh, is that my last pick? Uh, I, well, I have one more pick, so oh, okay. I'm going to pick one more. So nice. uh, I'm just going to say his name, and you can have him if you like, because I'm not going to take him. Tony Soprano, right? I've already got the Mafia part. Do you even watch The Sopranos? I watched enough of it. Yeah, it was pretty good. Cap. Uh, so now I've got two options left on the board. I'm going with Johnny Rose from Shit's Creek. Always positive, always professional, dressed to the nines. He was he, Johnny Rose is fun. Okay, I have two names written down. Not super deep cuts. One of them is Interstellar. One of them is Beautiful Boy. Yep. Uh, oh, Beautiful Boy's tough. Oh, my God. So I'm going to go with Beautiful Boy just because of the way you reacted. Oh, wow. So it's Steve, such a tough movie to watch. Steve Carell from Beautiful Boy. He's good. He's awesome in it. Not a very happy movie. Uh, but Steve Carell. I, sorry. I, I think it's an important movie to watch. Okay. It's an important movie to watch. Yeah. It's not super fun. It's got some good music. Uh, it's got some really good acting. Yep. I think it's on Amazon. But again, not a super happy watch. Like, watch The Incredibles before you watch this, right? For sure. And, and then, then watch Despicable Me after. Correct. You, you need to sandwich it for sure. Yeah. So, Incredibles, A Beautiful Boy, and then Despicable Me. Something of that, That's a good that nature. Okay. Yeah. Anything else for the people? No. Listen, thanks very much. This is actually under 40 minutes, so this is one of our short episodes in a little bit. Uh, now it's the time of the year where we're going to mix in some more fun topics. we got to uh, load up some guests because uh, it's that weird time where... It's just baseball, and I'm not sure if you know if the Tigers are terrible. That's enough Tigers talk. That's enough Tigers talk. Sorry, (laughs) Tigers. That's like a sentence way too much. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Happy Father's Day. Peace out.